Hey guys, it's uh, Thursday, it's Friday, right? Friday, it's Friday, Friday night. I get confused all this time off I have now. <laughs> this is part two of a little testimony of persecution. Um, I want to give God all the glory and uh, it's so amazing. I want to share a little bit more about um, my last video and add a little into it and give you a little behind the scenes of what God was has been showing me like before all this happened um, that keep in mind all this was spiritual um, wasn't about um, uh, the, the job wasn't going well in terms of success um, so around uh, I would say maybe um, within the last couple months uh, I've been sharing with my wife and uh, my best friend, uh, brother in the Lord, Mikey Mike. I've been sharing with him and my wife um, how uh, the job that I'm at, that God brought me to, the Holy Spirit spoke to me, told me about this place that was my job before I even got the job. Um, so he brought me there and he planted me there for a season uh, to, to, to spread the gospel, to share the good news of Jesus. Uh, to teach, to encourage, to correct, to love, um, to um, just let the Holy Spirit of God move in and through me at that part of my life. All about God's plan, about what He wants to do, uh, about His will being done. No one can stop that. God is God. He's almighty. He's sovereign. No one can stop His plan. He planted me there, um, and I know that He planted me there, uh, and I've seen the grace of God flowing through me um, and His mercy and His power and the power of the Holy Spirit is moving through me. And I know that uh, some people have, you know, the, 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 the light of the gospel has shined forth. The, the Spirit of God moving through me and overflowing the rivers of water through me has, has shined light upon their lives and they can never be changed. Uh, some seeds fall on good ground some, some seeds got choked up by things of this world, um, but some fell on good ground. And the word of God never returns void. It always goes forth and prospers at the thing that God sends it to. So the Lord brought me to this place, and um, it's been an amazing blessing. Uh, thankful to the owners and thankful to the employees, the managers, everybody that, that was there. I'm thankful that God had placed me there with them. I'm thankful for the job. It was a blessing. I'm grateful first to God for bringing me um, to this place and for him doing his perfect will and through my life. Um, so back to what I was saying, I was sharing with my wife and brother Mike how I just don't feel right there no more. You know, I just, I sensed the shift in the, in the atmosphere, it seemed like. It was like, it was like I, I sensed in my spirit that, that God was moving me, you know? And I couldn't really explain it exactly. It just, it was in my spirit and I was discerning in my spirit. And I felt like the Holy Spirit was leading me out, leading me out of there. So I started exploring um, with a, a place, a gentleman I should say, and uh, connected with him. And that was about a month ago and just was very... Um, just counting on God, you know, I was like, Lord, if this is your will, Father, you know, let this be, God. If this is not your will, Father, stop this from happening, God. Lord God, I'm just clay, Lord. Uh, I, I'm counting on you, Lord God. Lord, I'm, I'm pleading with you, Lord God. If this is your will, open this door wide open and close this door that I'm at, Lord. And if it's not your will, Lord, stop it from happening. So I waited probably about a a month maybe, three weeks, I don't know the exact time. Um, and still having this discernment in my spirit, but wasn't quite sure because, you know, the, the I was still here and the other door, God didn't open up wide for me to go through, okay? For whatever reasons uh, there were, there were reasons uh, God stopping this till this time. Um, however, uh, Tuesday, when uh, this gentleman, this this, this man, 
uh, who's, you know, the demons through him have been persecuting me heavily. And I don't hold nothing against this guy. Uh, I, I've been praying for him. Um, I'm keeping him in prayer. Uh, God loves him even though he's, you know, walking in darkness and doesn't see um, what he's doing, how he's being used to the enemy. But um, I'm, I'm really praying for this man that God, you know, opens up his heart, opens up his eyes to the to truth and that he would know Jesus personally, intimately as Lord and Savior, not just with his mouth and his lips, but with his heart, confessing, uh, pledging allegiance to the Lord Jesus and believing in the heart, uh, sincere faith, real faith uh, follows God. Real faith stands with God. How can a house stand if it's divided? So you can't be against God, and um, against truth, and before God. You can't serve two masters. You, you can't live a life of sin and live a life with God. You can't blend the two. You can't sit at the, uh, the table with the Lord and the table with demons. Um, but back to what I'm saying. Um, Tuesday, you know, as I said before, you know, uh, I got, I guess, a complaint maybe from a customer um, who I believe I think I know it was. I think it was the, um, pretty sure it was the Mormon that I was sharing the truth with. And, uh, and I've been telling people and I continue to tell people that um, if you if you love people, you'll warn them and tell them the truth. And it's not love if you say, "Oh, you gotta respect other people's uh, religions." You respect them as a person. You by, you love them and you share the truth with them. Okay, if there's a poisonous snake on my table and I loved uh, to eat snake for dinner, but you knew it was poisonous, you wouldn't say, "Oh, he loves snake, let him eat it," because you know if I ate that, I would die. Well, the Mormon. If the Mormon doesn't repent and turn to Jesus Christ and receive him as our Lord and Savior and give our life to God, turn from Mormonism, the Mormon cult, that person, if she didn't do, if she didn't do that, she will go and get tossed into the lake of fire for all of eternity for rejecting God. The Bible says that anyone that preaches another gospel, let them be condemned accursed and when it preaches another Jesus another gospel they're condemned unless they repent and come to the truth that will set them free I know this and God is inside of me so if the Holy Spirit leads me to speak truth to a Mormon I'm gonna do it because I love them and because God loves them more okay I love them so much I'm willing to lose my job for the Mormon, but really for Jesus Christ. Because we live for Jesus. The Bible says that those that try to save their lives will lose their life. But those that will lose their life will find their life. And this is worth it. It's worth it to, to live for Jesus. This is love. Walking with the Lord is love. Surrendering to Jesus Christ is love. Speaking the truth to other people that Jesus is the only way. There is no other way. There's not a name under heaven other than Jesus Christ that can save you. And it can't be a different Jesus. It's gotta be the Jesus of the Bible. It's gotta be Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ. Yahshua HaMashiach, Yahweh, Jesus. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit of God. One God in three persons. And he that denied the Son has not the Father. He that has the Son has life. He that has not the Son has not life. So Tuesday, uh, my manager, uh, you know, the one that's been, uh, the, the demons flowing through this, this poor man has been persecuting me and it came to a... One more collision course with these demons. And I let them know, and all of hell, and all of the devil, all of his demonic forces, that I meant what I said. And I got tested about what I said. I meant it, it never changed. And he told me that you can't talk about God inside the dealership. You can't talk, you got a complaint, and you can't talk about God in this dealership. Uh, you can't talk about politics, you can't talk about God, 
can't talk about that in, in, in the dealership. And uh, I respectfully, um, after he wrote me up for something else, right before he had me sign, I, I signed it because I, I was wrong. I didn't clock in. Um, but after he was finished talking respectfully, I said, you know, I will clock in, um, uh, but I'll never stop talking about Jesus Christ. And uh, if you have to fire me, I understand I'm ready to lose my job for Jesus Christ. Um, you know the story because I've already went over this. Um, um, so, however, um, after the persecution came, now look, he, you know, he, this man was filled with, you know, demons flying out of him. He told me to get the blank out of his office, and then he called me, you know, a psycho. <laughs> oh, praise God. Praise God. I love that man. I really do. And God knows that I've been praying for him. Um, God loves him more than I do, because uh, God died for him. So, but, um... Like I said, I've been feeling like there's been a shift in this place and I've, been, I've felt like the Lord was leading me out of there. You know, so when that happened and I got sent home, that was kind of like, that was, that was, that was it. Like I, I, I just knew that the, 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 this was coming to an end. Uh, and I've been waiting on God though. I've been waiting on God to, to open the door where he'd have me. I've been waiting. I knew it in my spirit. And I've been waiting on God. I've been waiting on the Lord. And then after that, I, you know, I, I, I left and I, I hooked up with uh, uh, this, this awesome guy. Um, and uh, that I've been waiting for the Lord to, you know, make this happen if uh, this be his will. And to stop it if it not. But long story short, I'm that. And uh, I'm so excited for... Uh, the opportunity that I, I was given by God, he opened up a door wide and it's such a beautiful opportunity and it's, it's amazing. But uh, but I just, the grace of God is was just waiting for me to step through the door that he has opened for me. And I took the job on, on Tuesday and uh, I'm not starting yet. I think I started the next week. Um, or the 19th, I think, was the latest I said uh, that we'd, we, we would start. Um, but, uh, like I said, I was waiting on God. And just to get confirmation that I know that this was the Lord um, was when I, well, I already, I already, I already, like, knew. I already knew this, why so I went and got the job. But the confirmation came again. After I took the job, I had a day off on Wednesday. And I was gonna, originally I, I was gonna go back to work on Thursday at my job and just maybe finish the weekend, you know, try to, you know, uh, work hard the rest of the week and, um, and then leave. <laughs> so um, I went back on Thursday and uh, it's like I already knew in my spirit. Remember, I already took the job on Tuesday. But on Thursday, I went back to, to my job that I was at and I walked up to the, and I told my wife, I go, babe, I think they're gonna fire me today. <laughs> now keep in mind, not to, not to, not to boast about um, myself. I'm gonna say this, I, and this is by the grace of God and God's grace only. Um, I'm, I've been completely successful at this place. Pretty much their their number one sales guy every month, um, almost the whole entire year and a half. Now there was a couple few months that I wasn't, um, and. Um, in that time frame, also of consistently, like, you know, by the grace of God, I mean, I was selling, you know, double, triple some people cars. You know, I probably, I probably average about 20, some, maybe 20, 21 cars, 22 cars a month. Maybe I don't know the exact average, but it was a lot. And probably the, the, the average for the store is probably, I have no idea. It's not high. Maybe maybe 10, I don't know, maybe 10, I don't know. I can tell you that by the grace of God, uh, I sell, pro uh, by the grace of God, God was having me sell about one fifth of their business. So uh, if they averaged 100 cars or 90 cars, whatever it was, maybe been, the point is, and, and also I'm just trying to illustrate the, the persecution, this was, this was from, from the devil persecuting me, of course, but, but God allowed this, and God will harden people's hearts, you know, as He hardened Nebuchadnezzar's heart when Nebuchadnezzar was 
the king of Babylon, and at that time was the biggest kingdom of the earth, he walked out and beat his chest saying, this was mine, I did this, I had the power. He had all the power, he thought. He thought he had all the power, and God brought him to his knees. And he lost everything, and God made him, he crashed, the Bible says, and lost his mind. So God can sway the hardest of hearts, the hardest of kings, he can sway anybody. He's Lord God Almighty. He can just snatch your life out of your hands. You can just drop dead like a pillar of salt. So, um, also, and again, I'm telling you this so you can understand this is persecution. Also, there is about 5,900 plus um, salespeople for Nissan, only for Nissan, in, in America. And at this moment, at this present time, right now, and about for the last month, by the grace of God, I'm tied for number one in all of America in customer satisfaction, the CSI, um, by the grace of God. And I'm saying that to say this, so I was pretty much, the, I was the number one sales guy, probably made them the most money, um, sold maybe double, maybe triple some, some other people in sales, um, was about 20% of what they were doing for selling cars a month, I did about 20 or maybe a little bit more percent of that business by the grace of God, by God's mercy and grace flowing through me, his favor. Um, and I was number one in the country in customer satisfaction right now. And I believe, to my knowledge, I got one complaint by a customer in about a year and a half for me uh, preaching the gospel, preaching the word of God. Um, but yet, the worldly people, the people that live in the world follow Satan and live in darkness, they, they can get complaints, and they have. There's been salespeople there that got complaints. There's been managers. The manager that was uh, that God used to get me out of there, the heart in his heart, was, uh, was got a complaint for another customer that somebody had, another salespeople, and I got this confirmed, and I heard this from a manager, that there was a complaint about him from somebody's customer, and ironically, the day before, and this is the God's honest truth, the day before, I had a customer that I followed up on, it was an older gentleman, probably in his 60s, and I was just following up to see, you know, is there anything I could do to sell him the, the, the vehicle, the truck, um, and he asked me, what was that uh, manager's name that, 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 that was talking to me, and I said, his name was, I don't want to tell you his name, but I said his name, and then he goes, yeah, that guy's a real P-R-I-C blank. So he complained about it, another person complained about him, and then the, the prior before that, someone came to the managers, and, and there was a woman that complained about another salesperson, saying the salesperson said something pretty much dirty, um, sexual, in a way, not directly, it was like that foul language that you don't talk in front of a woman. And they told the manager what happened, actually the salesperson, the woman, the woman uh, customer complained to the other salesperson. The other salesperson uh, went to the managers and told on the, on, the, on, the, on the guy that was the salesperson, told on what he said to the customers. They were offended and they didn't want to deal with them no more. I won't mention anybody's names, but the point was the managers heard what was said, and it was, woof, it was bad. It was so bad. They, he ain't got no write-up. He ain't getting no fire. But the person that preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ, woo, I'm the outcast. The number one sales guy there, the guy that's number one tied in the, in the whole of all of America in customer satisfaction, the one that's been consistently by the grace of God doing his job exceedingly above what they what they would expect the one you know the, so God's favor was the reason why all these things were happening but my point is I'm the one that gets fired <laughs> no no you're not allowed to talk about God in the showroom or you'll get or I'll get fired so I get fired for having that one complaint but the other people that have talk about you know uh vulgar sexual kind of talk and uh, other managers that only been there I don't want to <laughs> this manager hasn't been there longer than <laughs> just I don't want to I don't want to say too much that they see the video I don't want to stick anybody out if anyone's at, at like um, managers or anything like that other managers but um, it's just funny because they've gotten complaints and they've been there 
this amount of time. I've been here for this amount of time, and I get one one complaint. The point is, is that the Lord was showing me that this this was closing this door, and He was showing me like a month or two prior to this, and I even shared it with Brother Mike and my beautiful wife. Um, but I don't want to move anywhere unless God wants me to move. I'm not going anywhere unless the Lord closes the door and lets me know I have something else for you. Go through this door and opens it for me. Now, there was little confirmations that I had before this from God that I would be going somewhere else. But when, they, when, 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 I, when I was waiting on God, I wasn't sure. Like, what, what's going on? Why is it, you know, and I just... So what I kind of doubted a little bit, you know, but I, I, forgetting about all the stuff that the Lord was showing me about this. Long story short, guys, this was God's will this the whole time. He was showing me before this even happened uh, in my spirit, how uh, I had an unction from the Holy Spirit of God that this wasn't my home anymore and that he had a new place for me. And I believe he spoke that to me. So when I went and uh, on Tuesday, um, it solidified and done. God opened up this door, and I knew it. Just for a confirmation, just for confirmation that it, I was doing exactly what the Lord uh, wanted for me. You know, when I walked in Thursday, I got fired. The Lord hardened their heart, and they fired me. But I already made a choice by God's grace to step out and go where I believe he was leading me. You know, but this was just confirmation to show, hey, this was what I wanted. I closed this door. The Bible says, guys, that God opens up doors that no man can open. And he closes doors that no man can close. People of this world are so foolish. They think that they're in control. These millionaires, these owners of businesses, these um, politicians, these, these people think that just like Nebuchadnezzar walked out. Remember, Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon and that was the greatest of kingdoms on this earth at that time. No one was bigger than him. He thought, I, he did this. No one was greater. He was, the, he was the king. And God humbled himself. So he was talking against God, saying that he was in control. He had the power. He was the king. Who, who could say anything against him? And these people that, that, that are in this world, they think, oh, they think that they're in control. <laughs> I, it's so comical to me. They think that they're in control. God is in control. If God wanted me at this dealership, I would still be there. God could have swayed my heart to say something different to these managers. God could have turned their hearts, softened their hearts to, to, to put fear in them. He could have did anything he wanted. I could have found favor with the owners. I could have found favor with even the managers. They changed their mind. God can sway the hearts of kings. God can, can, can people can just like that. Bye-bye, be gone. Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ, guys, is king. He's the king of kings and the lord of lords. He holds all power and all authority in heaven and earth and everything below. Lord God Almighty, our Lord and Savior, our Father in heaven is in control, guys. No devil in hell can stop that. No devil in hell can stop God's will. If God wants you somewhere at a job, you're going to be there. And if he wants to move you, he will move you. However he does it, whether he hardens someone's heart and they fire you, or whatever the case is, God is in control. And no weapon formed against any believer in Jesus Christ, anyone that has faith in God as their Lord and Savior, anyone that's given their lives to God, anyone that follows Jesus Christ, Anyone, guys, no weapon formed against us will prosper. And every tongue that rises against us, thou shalt condemn. Jesus Christ stands as our righteousness, as our shield, as our buckler, as our defender, as our lawyer, as our redeemer, as our king, as almighty God. Angels are encamped around us. 
that we should not dash our foot against a stone. Our, hand, our, our lives are in his hands and no enemy can pluck us out of his hands. He goes before us and he stands behind us. He's on the left side of us. He's on the right side of us. He's on the front of us. He's in. He's on the back of us, guys. He's on the bottom and on the top. He's on the inside of us and on the outside. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And if God be for us, who could be against us? Who can be against us? Almighty God is our daddy. Fear not. As my, this picture right here says on my wall, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord, your God, will be with you wherever you go. Fear not for God is with us. For God is our father. That is all that are believers in Jesus Christ. All those that place their faith in Jesus Christ and received him in our hearts as our Lord and Savior. Almighty God fights for us, guys. He moves mountains for us, guys. He repays, says the Lord. God tells us to bless our enemies, pray for our enemies, love our enemies. He takes care of us, guys. Rest in Jesus Christ. Come on to me, all you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest for your souls. His yoke is easy, his burdens are light. He takes care of us. We have nothing to fear, nothing to worry about. Stand for the Lord Jesus Christ wherever you are. Don't let no devil in hell, no person, anybody tell you what you can, when you could talk about Jesus Christ, when you could talk about truth. Don't let anybody ever tell you you can't do that. Not here. Don't ever be, don't ever fear the devil. God is in control. Don't forget, don't forget who our father is. Don't look at the things which are seen. Look at the things which are unseen. The things which are seen are temporarily. The things which are unseen are eternal. Walk by faith, not by sight, guys. God owns everything, guys. The earth is his in the fullness of. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The demons fear and tremble at the name of Jesus. Don't fear men. Fear God. <laughs> Glory be to the King of Kings. Glory be to your name, Lord Jesus. Our Lord and our Savior, almighty God. All the glory be, all the glory be to you, O God. All the honor, God. You're faithful, God. You're faithful, O oh Lord God. He does not fail. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not fail. <laughs> oh, people might think I'm crazy. The world thinks that I'm crazy. People might think that you're crazy when you stand for Jesus Christ. We're the weird ones. That's okay. You just love people. Just love them. Jesus told us that we're in this world, we're not of this world. They hated him, they'll hate us. My family thinks I'm crazy when I talk like this. My brother, I talked to him today. He's like, <laughs> I told him what happened. He says, what are you gonna do? I'm like, what do you mean? I got a job. He's like, well, no, I mean, what are you gonna do? You're gonna keep losing your jobs if you talk like this. I said, <laughs> <laughs> I said, God is in control, buddy. What's wrong with you? Oh, man. 
I can't wait for the day that my brother repents and, and humbly comes to God. He's gonna, because God loves him. I already know what God spoke to me. It's gonna be such a beautiful day. Um, and just to see the, um, and be released from the, the deception and the way that the enemies have, the enemy has def um, deceived and hurt him. And all those that don't believe, my God is in control. His glory is revealed and will be revealed. His power, the Holy Spirit of God will continue to work in and through my life to bring God all of the glory, all of the honor, all of the praise, all of the worship that we yield our, our, our instruments, instruments of, of righteousness, uh, instruments of honor to bring, to bring glory to God's name to be used by the Holy Spirit of God that works in and through us to reach the world, to reach others, that when they look at us, they see Jesus. When they hear us speak, they hear God speaking through us. <laughs> I love you guys. Be encouraged. God bless you. Jesus is Lord. Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Almighty God. And all praises and all glory be to Him. Suffer persecution, guys. It's a glory and it's an honor to suffer persecution. No one said it's easy, but it's a glory and it's an honor that we get to partake of the sufferings for Christ. That's, that's an honor that we can do that. So rejoice and be exceedingly glad when you're persecuted, when you're spoke evil against, when you're spit on, when you're rejected. Praise God. When people hate you, praise God. Love them. You're not dealing, you're not wrestling against them. You're wrestling against principalities, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, the Bible says. That's why we don't love our enemies, pray for our enemies. They need Jesus just like we do. Praise God that we know the truth and the truth has made us free. And who the sun sets free is free indeed. God bless you. Jesus loves you. Stay encouraged. Stay filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Stay dependent upon and trusting in God. Yield into Him. Abiding in Him. And Him in us so we can bear much fruit. Apart from Him, we can do nothing. God bless you guys.